The fans of this sport are built differently. They demand excellence and expect nothing less. Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond is a show dedicated to the fans. Your new home for Big Ten Wrestling is here, and it starts now. Welcome once again to Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Rick Pizzo joined, as always, by Shane Sparks. After an extended weekend, extended until Monday night, Penn State dominant against Rutgers, the Nittany Lions posting 1,000 dual wins in program history. Pretty impressive. Now one of six teams in college wrestling history to accomplish that amazing feat, 1,000 dual meet victories. It was a milestone weekend for Penn State. Also, Kale Sanderson picking up victory 200 as the head coach of the Nittany Lions. I was going to say, it seems like about 995 of those 1,000 <laughs> have come under Kale Sanderson, as good as Penn State has been as of late. And that's how the weekend kicked off on Friday night. One of the most hyped, one of the most anticipated matchups of the year, as it always is. Penn State, Iowa, the Nittany Lions win eight out of ten matches in the duel. Four by majors, six straight, all five after intermission. Haynes, Messenbrink, Starachi, Truax, Brooks, Kirkfleet, maybe, and we'll discuss this in a bit, the best back end ever. What a weekend for Penn State. And how about Nebraska? The Cornhuskers now 6-1 and one in Big Ten duels. They beat Michigan 25-7. Six matches they won against top 10 ranked guys. Caleb Smith, Jacob Van D, and Antrell Taylor all with huge wins. And Ridge Lovett remains undefeated at 149. They did to Michigan what Michigan did to Iowa, jumping all over the opposition in the first five, six bouts. Don't sleep on the Gophers. Minnesota wins eight of ten against Purdue. Set of those eight with bonus points, five were tech balls. And how about this stat? 31 total takedowns in the duel. The Gophers had 28. You got Patrick McKee, you got Michael Blockus, you got Gerald Joles and others. This is a dangerous Gopher team. Maryland. Ethan Miller at 149 and Jackson Smith at 197. Victories for the Terrapins. They beat Michigan State 28 to 15. Maryland this season winning its second Big Ten dual meet. That's the first time in program history they are building in Maryland something they can hang their hat on and build from. Congratulations to Alex Clemson in Maryland. Wonderful stuff by the Terps. We do start with how the weekend started and that was Penn State once again exerting its supremacy over this league over the rest of the nation 29 to 6 you win 8 out of 10 Shane I don't believe there were a lot of folks outside of Iowa City that thought the Hawkeyes could hang with Penn State as deep and talented as Penn State is but this was just another example of everybody trying to play catch up to Kale Sanderson's team and it's the way they did it they got to their offense they dominated the takedown stat and they were able to ride a lot of riding time five bonus point victories it was a really dominating night for Penn State to go into Iowa City because I was still a really really good team this season as I've said Rick I think it's more about how special Penn State is how dominating this Penn State team is and we will get more on that in just a second as we kind of discuss where this Penn State team ranks among some of the all-time greats for Iowa you told me after that Michigan loss that you didn't have a lot of concerns with Tom Brand's team because of the history of the Hawkeyes and what they've been able to do in the NCAA tournament and all those finishes what are your thoughts right now after that Penn State duel where obviously things get at least a little bit easier the rest of the way? I think when you're comparing a team to Penn State, they make a lot of teams look pretty average. But I think for Iowa, you've got to figure out a way to generate some offense on your feet. They haven't been able to score takedowns. That's been a key concern. And I know it's against guys that are really good in the guys wearing that Penn State singlet. But you've got to get out from on bottom. You can't be giving up two, three minutes of riding time. you got to find a way to make it go your way. And I know that's a tough task, but you got to find a way to get it done. All right, so the conversation has now arisen among some folks about this Penn State team and whether they could be considered among the best ever. I, I could certainly make the argument that the back five or six guys are certainly capable of being in that category. Where do you think this group could ultimately rank among the best ever to get to the Resolite? This team is in the conversation to be the greatest team ever. The 1997 Iowa team, Rick, they had six in the finals, five champions, eight All-American. They amassed 170 points. This Penn State team, five number one ranked guys. Everybody's ranked in the top 10. 
This team can score points, and with the new rule change, that three-point takedown, they're getting bonus points quicker. That's going to help them out as well. So no question, this team will have a chance to do something special in Kansas City in March. I, I know Jim Gibbons also wants you to go back about another decade, back to that 86 team, right, that only sent eight guys to the NCAA tournament and still racked up all sorts of crazy points. Nebraska. A great weekend for the Huskers over Michigan, a red-hot Michigan team that had to be feeling really good about itself. And you want to talk about a team that does score points in bunches. That's exactly what the Huskers can do. Nebraska fell to Iowa in their opening match in the Big Ten schedule, and now they have been rolling. That was a big win against Michigan in Lincoln. We know what Michigan did the week previous in Ann Arbor and beating the Hawkeyes. But Nebraska, they get it done. Six victories over top ten ranked guys. That was huge. It began with Caleb Smith at 125 pounds. The showcase matchup at 149. Ridge Lovett over Austin Gomez. Got to go back to 133. Jacob Van D hands Dylan Raguson his first defeat of the season. And Antrell Taylor at 165 over Cam Amin, multiple time All American. They had it rolling. They had Uncle Mo. They had momentum on their bench. A question that you and I have been debating all year long who's the second best team? in the Big Ten because you go to the transitive property. You mentioned <laughs> Nebraska losing its first duel of the season to Iowa, but then Iowa gets beat by Michigan, but then Nebraska comes back and they take care of the Wolverines. So at least via that theory, you would say, well, these three teams are in the mix, but you have to throw Ohio State in there because they also knocked off <laughs> Michigan before <laughs> Michigan beat Iowa. If you've kept that all straight, then the question to Shane is, who is the second best? And I have no idea, I, I Rick. I have no idea because Penn State's the favorite, but that's what's going to make the Big Ten tournament in Maryland so much fun. You have a handful of teams that are going to be fighting for second place. It's going to be a great race for second, in my opinion. And then you have some of those other teams like Wisconsin with a Dean Hamity or a Purdue with a Matt Ramos. Jackson Smith at Maryland. You have guys and other teams that will play a role in how that all works itself out. Let's focus now on some standout individuals. And when you talk Penn State, the first two names out of everybody's mouth, understandably, Carter Starachi, Aaron Brooks. Levi Haynes has become one of the most dominant wrestlers in the nation. Just this past weekend, a major over Jared Frannick, which was never in doubt, and then a fall against Rutgers, what are your thoughts right now on the way Haynes is wrestling and what his potential ceiling could be? Sky is the limit for this guy. Just a true sophomore, national finalist last year, failed to Austin O'Connor of North Carolina, who picked up his second title. What he did to Jared Frannick, three takedowns on the Hawkeye. He was dominant on top, over three and a half minutes of riding. And then, as you said, another bonus point victory gets the fall against Rutgers. This guy has so much talent. I don't know where his weakness is because he's really free on his feet and he's a beast in the top position. He's that new crop of Nittany Lions. He is that wonderful combination of aggressive yet technically sound. Aaron Brooks, Starachi, Mitchell Messenbrink all <laughs> fall into that category. You want to talk aggressive, let's talk Ridge Lovett. We were both looking forward to that showdown between Lovett and Austin Gomez, two terrific guys at that weight. And I think there were some folks that were waiting for this to be the moment when Lovett went down. Didn't happen. Ridge Lovett came out, scores seven points in the first period. Austin Gomez, he came out strong. Lovett with the great defense. He's up 7-0, hangs on for the 11-4 decision. 13 bonus point wins here for Ridge Lovett this season. A national finalist a couple of years ago took that red shirt last year, and he has come back, and you can see he is just stronger. He looks so good, so dominant right now at 149. I got to be honest, Rick, this surprised me a little bit, but Ridge Lovett, he put his stamp on a big-time victory. You talk about statement wins. This was a statement win for Ridge Lovett. Maybe, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country, maybe one of the most fun wrestlers to watch no every time he takes the mat. You brought up Jackson Smith a little bit earlier in the show. Let's expand that conversation because the Penn State wrestlers, the Iowa wrestlers, Nebraska, Michigan, those guys get all sorts of attention. Jackson Smith is a guy who deserves a little bit more love. He's very good at 197 pounds, highly ranked guy. He really impressed me last year at the Big Ten Championships. He beat Zach Bronigle of Illinois, and he beat Jacob Warner of Iowa. He finishes third at the Big Ten Tournament. Falls in the blood round at the national tournament last March, but this guy has all the tools. He's a Georgia native. I love to see that. 
This guy is a force to be reckoned with, brings a physicality and a real tough mentality. They have a superstar in Maryland at 197 pounds. And trust me, he is a guy that nobody in that 197 bracket wants to see on their side when Absolutely they get not. to the postseason tournament. Speaking of guys nobody wants to see at 197, here's Aaron Brooks. He is our guest on Beyond This Week. We'll hear from him in just a bit. And of course, we are always talking technique. All that and more to come here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Welcome back to Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. I'm Rick Pizzo. Our guest this week is not just the best 197 pounder in the Big Ten. He is arguably the best wrestler pound for pound in any weight class in the entire country. He is Penn State's Aaron Brooks, and he's standing by with Shane. Penn State has now won 54 consecutive dual meets. Aaron, you've been around some great teams. Every team is special in its own way. What makes this team different from those teams you've been on in the past? Um, you know, it's hard to say. You know, um, I've been blessed that every year I've been on this team. It's been a really uh, great group of guys. We're all close. But I think um, one thing about this team is just the youth. You see, um, we got some young talent in a lot of weight classes. And um, it's just exciting to see what the future holds for all of them. So, um, but outside of that, man, it's, um, you know, we're all close. We're all, you know, really uh, like a brotherhood. So it's a blessing. Outside of your faith, Aaron, how are you a leader for this team? Um, I think just my actions I try to be, you know, um, even today, you know, we, well, we just got back from Carver Hawkeye and, you know, travel kind of wears on the body. I don't know if you can hear it. I got a little stuffy nose, immune system stuff, but um, just still coming out here to compete. You know, I think uh, just the actions, you know, it's just, it's bigger than wrestling, you know, so you want to lead by example and show them that um, regardless, we go to work and we love to do it. Heard you talk about how you enjoy the preparation. What is it about the preparation that really excites and motivates you? Um, I just say, especially with wrestling, you know, um, just learning and just moving forward. I think uh, one thing I've really realized is, and God's really showed me this, that uh, like 97% of our life is preparation. So I think um, when you when you learn to fall in love with the preparation and process of anything, you know, that's what's going to get you through the tough trials and tri uh, trials and tribulations. You know, 3% is the victory and the, t uh, the celebration. So um, I just try to keep that mindset, remembering that preparation's, you know, over half of my life. So why not love it? Another great word that starts with P to go along with preparation is presence. Being presence, how has that influenced your wrestling? Um, it's a gift. You know, I think um, just learning that, especially coming through in college, but you don't want to think about what's going to happen in the match or um, whatever, how your weight cut went bad, and that's not all in the past. I think when you're present, you know, you can catch on and catch on to the clues, catch on to the reads in the match and just uh, make the adjustments. So I think... Um, that's what makes a great wrestler, you know, making those adjustments and uh, just being present once again, you know, and, and also in life. But especially on the mat, you know, you're able to catch on to what your opponent's doing and not kind of have expectations and that kind of stuff. Winning four national titles, that is a goal that's very important to you. But you don't want to be crippled by chasing down that goal. How do you balance? How do you navigate those two things? Um, you know, I think if, if it happens, it happens. You know, um, once again, you guys know this This isn't my identity. You know, so um, one thing for me to come out and do is regardless is go to work. You know, I represent the kingdom. So, um, you know, if I find myself there, I go hard. If I don't, regardless, I go hard. So um, I don't think about it too much. You know, it's not my end goal. Um, you know, it's something that I have the opportunity to do, but it's not something that um, I think about or, uh, you know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Your accolades, Aaron, staggering. Three-time national champion, three-time Big Ten champion. You've had success on the world stage, been a part of some great Penn State teams. What's the one accolade you're most proud of when you look at your resume? Mm, uh, I can't really say. You know, I think um, the times where I grow the most, I think, is times like tonight. You know, so if I'm not feeling too good and I come out and wrestle or times like Carver, you know, not feeling too good, come out and wrestle – that's uh, the times I think I, I'm the most proud of myself, you know, because um, I think that's bigger than the big matches. You know, that's, um, yeah, that, that's, that's my opinion. And um, the things I look at myself, like, okay, like, we did this, you know, because um, you didn't want to do it, and you do it, so. Final time wrestling in front of the Penn State fans inside Bryce Jordan Center, and you go out in style, you get the fall. What was it like tonight to wrestle in that environment with your teammates? You guys really stepped up. Yeah, it was cool. Um, well, after I got the pen, I looked down. I was like, man, that's it. You know, uh, like I said, I don't like to take 
take a moment and think about it too much, but um, this place is, or well, even Rec Hall, you know, but being able to wrestle in front of our crowd and our fans is um, a huge blessing. It's a part of the reason why, you know, you should come to Penn State and wrestle. I was thinking about that before I came out uh, watching Bernie. I'm like, this is why we come to Penn State, you know, so. Growing up, Aaron, your dad, John, would play Kale Sanderson videotapes. You've studied Kale Sanderson. You can see it in your style. You're great with the ankle picks, the cradles. Mm -hmm. Being around Kale Sanderson as long as you have been and studying him throughout the years, what's still the one thing that you just sit back in awe and amazement with, with what he's able to do in a wrestling mat? Uh, just adapt. You know, um, yeah, some things is God-given. You know, he's got a natural feel. I think when you... Um, Put all the other stuff outside the window. You know, and you get someone who has a natural feel for wrestling. They're hard to beat, you know, because um, there's a counter to every technique. But, you know, one that can adapt and, uh, you know, just be be able to move the body the right ways and kind of have that feel. So even at uh, his age now, Coach Kill still got it. So it's really cool to see. Final question for you, Aaron. I believe it is on your left bicep. You have a tattoo. What is that yeah. tattoo? Yeah. Um, so I had a uh, junior league coach up through high school, too. Um, his name was Chris Bentley. And he passed away, I think, uh, 2017, before I went to Fargo. But I remember when I was younger, he told me if I won four uh, Maryland State titles, I could get the tattoo he had on his arm. But um, it's just uh, it's a logo. It was my club logo. Uh, it stands for, you know, the Renegade Within, Renegade Force. So I got that in his honor and then um, went out there and, and do this for, you know, he's a part of it all. So. Aaron, really appreciate the time. Thank you so much for joining us on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Uh, thank you, Shane. Coming up next, we focus on the science behind the art. Shane Sparks is talking technique when Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond returns right after this. You certainly know what you see each and every weekend on the mat. Figuring out the how can be a bit more difficult for anyone who hasn't spent excessive amounts of time on the Resolite. And that's exactly what this next segment is for. Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond, it is time to talk some technique. Shane Sparks alongside three-time All-American and Big Ten champion for Michigan, Alec Pantelio, going to show us his version of a double leg. Yep, so blast double from a sprinter stance, all right? Why a sprinter stance is a big thing. I've always realized, I've watched the most explosive human beings, they take off from this position, right? In wrestling, we're always like this. Sure, this is athletic, but it's not explosive. This is where you want to be. So, apply that to wrestling, that's why I want to set up my shots. I get into the explosive stance, sprinter stance, and this is how I'm going to do it. So, I'm going to push into him, right? What's he going to want to do in wrestling? Push back, it's all give and take, right? That's what I want. So. As I push in, the more he pushes back, that's what I want. I'm gonna pull his arm right here. This hand's coming over the top. I'm gonna circle his body. I want his feet heavy. All right, if his feet are light, he can sprawl, he can move. I don't want that, I want him heavy. So a circle, boom. Feet are heavy, good, perfect. As he does that, I'm dropping down to a sprinter stance. Right here, all right? Notice my leg isn't super far away like this. It's not super under me like this. It's right here. And I'm off the line on like a, 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 a race, all right? So, I'm right here. Usually when I drop down to a sprinter stance, he, his hips go back. His feet are heavy enough where he can't move them, kind of like a mud, but his hips can go back. That's what I want, that locks his leg out. So, all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my elbows, I'm gonna open them up right here. Just enough space so I can get under him. And then here's a key, key point. I look where I'm going the entire time. A lot of guys, they shoot with their heads down like this. Wherever you look at is where you're gonna go. It's just biomechanics. You get your spine elongated, you're falling down. You look up, you go up. I wanna go through the guy, so I'm looking right at the guy. All right, so I'm right here, elbows come up, I'm looking where I'm going, I'm shrugging my neck, and lastly, as I shoot this double leg, I'm locking my hands, I'm not cupping my hands. I lock my hands, I'll explain why in a second. Now blocking. Drives through for the exclamation mark for the Wolverine. Two more points with riding time, the score is five to two. The problem with cupping your hands on these double legs, I see it all the time, especially in college wrestling, Guys, they shoot double legs right here. They cup their hands, the guys start scrambling, moving. Right? Get extended. You're not strong, extended. Right? Your muscles are extended. You want to be tight, compact. Lock your hands, squeeze. So I want to do his legs. So, circle all back. This way. I'm going to push into him. He's going to push back into me. Good, that's what I want. Hands coming to the inside, pulling on his tricep, circling right here. Boom, boom. Spirit stance. His head's going to sway back just a little bit. Good. Open the gate right here. I look where I'm going. I'm exploding through the guy and locking my hands. All right, 
right here. The ref gives me three points, and now I climb up. Not before, not after. All right, so this is probably the first move people learn when they start wrestling. It's because it works, it's efficient, right? The higher levels you go up in wrestling, guys get better down blocks, better movement, right? So you have to find ways to open them up even better, then find ways to finish it so you don't get scrambled. So all I'm doing here, close to stance, driving through, locking my hands, screwing takedown, and it's a pretty fun move to watch happen if you hit it hard and fast. Sprinter stance double leg from Michigan Big Ten champion, Alec Pantaleo here on Big Ten Wrestling and Beyond. Time for one final break on Beyond. When we come back, it's another trip down memory lane with this week's edition of Remember That Guy. Busy slate coming up this weekend on the Big Ten Network. You can see the doubleheader, Ohio State, Michigan State, Wisconsin, Minnesota. That's Friday night and then Sunday afternoon, Wisconsin at Iowa, Penn State playing host to Nebraska. Oh, Shane Sparks sharing those random Twitter thoughts, deciding that when he dies, he wants his ashes to be spread at all of the Big Ten wrestling venues. I'm guessing we're going to get some approval necessary from some of these universities. What's going through your head when you throw these tweets out? I just love it so much, Rick. I love the venues. I love Big Ten wrestling. It's the premier wrestling conference. It's the big leagues. It's the big time. You can't leave me yet. We don't have another <laughs> co-host for Big Ten wrestling and beyond. It is time for Remember That Guy. Shane remembers this guy, Jesse Whitmer, and you remember him for a couple of very good reasons, not just his Iowa career. Well, he was such a stud out of Eagle Grove, Iowa. He goes to Iowa at 118 pounds. He's behind Chad Zapital and behind Mike Mena. He's a one-time starter. He's a one-time All-American. He's a one-time national champion. An amazing run as a sixth seed to win that title. One of five Hawkeyes in 1997. Here's that 97 team. So good. Dan Gable's last year. Lincoln McElravey, Joe Williams, a couple of the all-time greats. Lee Fullhart was an absolute boss. How about Mark Ironside, the two-time Hodge Trophy winner? That 97 team under Dan Gable, that team was loaded. Maybe the gold standard that this year's Penn State team is trying to live up to, depending on what the Nittany Lions can do for the rest of the year. For Shane Sparks, I'm Rick Pizzo. As always, we love you hanging out with us here on Wrestling and Beyond.